Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video, we're, we're going to introduce the inverse of a matrix. Specifically, we're going to talk about the following four topics. One, we'll define what an inverse matrix is. Two, we'll show how to compute some inverse matrices. And we'll look at the applications of finding the inverse. And lastly, some properties of the inverse matrix. We'll start by looking at the definition. An n by n matrix A is invertible, which means it has an inverse, if there is an n by n matrix C, such that the following condition holds, such that C times A equals identity and A times C equals identity. So if we have this matrix, then when we take it and multiply A, we get to identity, and we take A times the matrix, we get to identity, then we call that matrix the inverse. So C is the inverse. And we'll express it, we'll, re we'll denote it by this symbol. It looks like A raised to the negative one, but it means the inverse of A. And the first property that we're going to state right away is this matrix is unique. So the inverse is a unique matrix. Now two other terms we want to introduce are singular and non-singular. So it says a non-invertible matrix is singular. So singular means that the matrix does not have an inverse. If it is an invertible matrix, so we can find inverse, then we call those non-singular matrices. So just two more definitions. Now let's look at the computation of an inverse matrix. We're going to start off with the formula for the inverse of a 2 by 2 matrix. This only applies to a 2 by 2. But if we're given some 2 by 2, and we'll name the elements here, the components of that matrix, A, B, C, and D, and then we have a condition, if this is not equal to 0, if A, D minus B, C is not equal to 0, then here is our definition for the inverse matrix. It says we find some scalar value here, 1 over A, D minus B, C, and later on in the course, we're going to find out that this, this term here, AD minus BC, this is actually going to be the determinant of A, and we'll define that later. But for right now, we're just going to calculate that number value. We take that number value, and we multiply it by this matrix, which looks just like our original A, except we've swapped the values on the main diagonal. We had AD, and now we have DA, and we had a negative sign. We flip the sign of the off diagonal. We go from B to negative B, from C to negative C. So that's how we calculate this inverse matrix. Now let's look at some examples. So if we look at the first one, we're given a value A. So now I know what A, B, C, and D are. Then I can calculate the inverse by writing 1 over AD, so this product, 1 times 4, minus this product, 2 times 3. And then I take that's my my number value, my thing I'm going to scale this matrix by. Now to write out this next piece, I swap the values on the main diagonal. So I had 1, 4. Now I have 4, 1. And I add negative signs to the off diagonal. I flip their sign. So now I have negative 2 and negative 3. And if I want, I can just simplify this. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So this is negative 1 half times this, times this matrix. And I'm absolutely allowed to just leave it like that. Or if I want, I can multiply the matrix by the scalar, which means multiplying each of the components to give me negative 2, positive 1, positive 3 halves, and negative 1 half. And this should be the inverse matrix of A. And once again, to, to verify that, to test that, we could show that this is the matrix. This is the matrix that A times A inverse equals identity and A inverse times A equals identity. So I can always check this result. And I'm going to check it for, for one case here. So I'm going to look at my matrix A, and I'm going to times that by what, I've, what I'm stating is the inverse. And I'll do that multiplication just to see if I'm right here. To do that multiplication, I'll take this column times this row to start off with to get my first component here. This will be negative 2 plus 2 times 3 halves, which is 3. And then I'll take this column times this row to get this component. I'll get negative 6 plus 4 times 3 halves. That's positive 6. And I'll move on to the next component. Take this column times this row. I will get 1 minus 2 times a half, which is 1. I'll take that column times this row, and I will get 3 plus 4 times a negative 1 half. That would be a negative 2. And if I simplify this, I get 1, 0, 0, 1. So sure enough, I've gotten to identity. Now, to really be thorough, I could switch the order of A and inverse to show that A inverse times A equals identity. But right now, I'm pretty confident. So I've kind of verified that, yes, this is 
the inverse matrix. So I'm going to try it with my second matrix. I'll just kind of blindly start using my formula for the inverse matrix. So I'll take 1 over this product, 1 times 4, minus this product, 2 times 2 is 4, and I can kind of stop there. I see that this number is going to be 1 divided by 0, which is undefined. And then I may be reminded that when A, D minus B, C is equal to 0, there is no inverse matrix. So this formula works when this determinant value, as we'll find out later it's called, is not equal to 0. Now let's talk about why we want to be able to find an inverse matrix. And the answer is because we want to solve equations. So let's start with this regular algebraic equation. If I want to solve this equation, you might say, well, let's just divide both sides by 3. And if we divide both sides by 3, we get x equals 2, and we found our solution. But maybe a different way to think about that, instead of dividing by 2, is that I can multiply both sides by 1 third. So I'm multiplying both sides by 1 third. And on the left-hand side, because I know that 1 third times 3 equals 1, and 1 times x is just x, I get this. On the right-hand side, I get 1 third times 6, which is 2. That's another way we can think about solving this. But why did I choose to multiply by 1 third? And the answer is because multiplying by 1 third is the inverse operation to multiplying by 3. Because 1 third times 3 gets me 1. It multiplies out to um, the multiplicative inverse for real numbers. And so we're going to take that thought process and look at a matrix equation, ax equals b. And so what I'd like to do here is multiply both sides by the inverse of a. And I can do that because I want something here to multiply to get to 1, or identity in this case. a inverse times a, by the definition of a matrix inverse, is the identity matrix. And the identity matrix times the vector x is just the vector x. And so in this way, I'm solving for that missing x. So given this matrix equation where I'm given some a and I'm given some b, and I'm trying to solve this thing for x, I can actually find that solution just by taking the inverse of a times the vector b. So I take my matrix a, I calculate its inverse. a inverse times b is that solution. And once again, it's the same thing I did for that, that algebraic equation. So now let's look at an example. So I'm given a matrix A, I'm given a vector B, and I want to find A inverse and use it to solve AX equals B. If AX equals B and A is invertible, then X is equal to A inverse B. So let me first calculate A inverse. A inverse should be 1 over this product, that's 2, minus this product, that's 3 halves, times the matrix where I switch the values on the strong diagonal, the main diagonal, to 1. I change the signs of the values on the off diagonal. So now we'll just clean this up a little bit. 2 minus 3 halves is 1 half in the denominator. Instead of dividing by a half, I'll multiply by 2. And when I actually do that multiplication, I get 4, negative 6, negative 1, and 2. This should be my inverse matrix. And so what's my solution to the system? Well, it would just be my inverse matrix times my vector b. And if I do that multiplication, if I think of this as the row vector process, I will get a vector we have 4 minus 12 and negative 1 plus 4. So this will be a negative 8 and 3. And that should be the solution to the system. Now, of course, I've already solved systems like this before. If I wanted to solve this system, I could just write my matrix A and then augment this with B and do my row reduction. And that should be another way to solve this matrix equation because the matrix equation is equivalent to the vector equation, is equivalent to the linear system. I can solve these all by using this row reduction technique. And if I did this technique, I would take row 2 minus 1 half times row 1. My row 1 would stay the same. I would get a 0 here. I would get 2 minus 
1 half of 3, so 2 minus 3 halves, which is 1 half. Now we get 2 minus 1 half times 1, this would be 3 halves. Then I would take row 2 and multiply it by 2. First row would stay the same. We get 0, 1, and 3 here. Then I would take row 1 minus 3 times row 2. That would give me a 0 value here, so I'm eliminating that value. My second row would stay the same. And I would get 3 minus 3 times 1 is 0. 1 minus 3 times 3 should give me negative 8. And I can see my solution is the same. So I've found the solution either way. So why would we calculate the inverse and solve it that way? Well, one reason might be because I have, might have a system where A represents some characteristic of the system. And I want to check the solutions given a variety of B vectors. So I might want to solve this for some vector, I'll call it B1, and then some vector B2, some vector B3, so on and so forth. Then I want to solve the system for more than just one B vector. And if I find the inverse matrix, then finding the solutions is easy. It's just matrix multiplication. It's A inverse times B1, or A inverse times B2. So I've done all the work to, to solve the system by finding the inverse matrix. So that can be a valuable reason to solve a system using the inverse instead of the row reduction. So now we've talked about the inverse matrix and how to calculate it. But now let's talk about the properties of an inverse matrix. So we're going to state these three properties. If A and B are both invertible matrices, they both are able to find inverses. Then A inverse, that matrix, is also invertible. And the inverse of the inverse, that's what this says, is just A. Second property says AB is invertible. That's a strong statement just in itself. It tells us if two matrices are invertible and we multiply them together to get a new matrix, that matrix should also be invertible. And that'll be an important property because later one of the big jobs is going to be to determine whether a matrix is invertible. But not only is it invertible, but the inverse of that product is this thing. It's B inverse times A inverse. So it's, in some sense, we have the inverse of a product is the product of the inverses, but it's in reverse order, just like it was for the transfer, transpose property. And the last property says that A transpose is invertible, and the inverse of A transpose is the transpose of A inverse. So that is another important property. Now, the last thing I want to do is talk about one of these properties. I'm going to do a proof for one of them. Um, the proof is relatively easy, and the thing I want to stress here isn't necessarily the, the, the actual proof, but um, the process of going through this proof. It really emphasizes the definition of inverse. So I want to prove that the inverse of AB is equal to this thing. So what this is saying is I need to prove that this is the inverse of AB. That's what AB, this symbol means. So I'm going to call this matrix B inverse A inverse. I'm going to just give it another name. Call it D. To show that this thing is the inverse of AB means to take D and show that D times AB is equal to identity. And then to take AB and multiply it by D, and that should also get me to identity. If I can show that both of these things is true, then by the definition of inverse matrix, D would have to be the inverse. It would have to be the inverse of AB, like that. So that's all the proof is really having me do. I have to just show these two steps. So let me show that the first one is true. Let me show that that is true. I will take B inverse times A inverse and multiply it AB times AB. And if I can get to identity, that's showing that the first step is true. So matrix multiplication is associative. So I can get rid of these parentheses. So this is really this thing. I can multiply them in any order. I'm going to think about this order. But if I multiply those inside terms, A inverse times A is just identity. So I get this thing by the definition of matrix inverse. But identity times any matrix, including B, just leaves me with that matrix. So I have this thing by the definition of the identity matrix. And then B inverse times B, that's just identity by the definition of matrix inverse. So I've shown that this matrix times AB gets me to identity. And all I have to do is do that in the other direction. And I should be done. 
and all the same arguments apply. This is just this by the associative property of matrix multiplication, which is just this by the definition of inverse matrix. Oops, dropped the negative one here. And thanks to the property of identity matrix, I just get this. And then lastly, I'm back to identity because of the definition of matrix inverse. So I've shown that both of these things are true. Therefore, B inverse A inverse must be the inverse of AB. All right, that concludes that little mini proof. Just kind of a quick run through of how to show that something is the inverse of a matrix. That also concludes this video on inverse matrices. Thank you.